Hello and welcome to the CCIE Lab video series. My name is Jeremy Chara and I'm going to be walking alongside you as we go through a world of Cisco configurations, examples, and equipment and prepare for the CCIE Lab itself. What I want to accomplish here in this introductory nugget is to talk about what you should expect and what this series is designed to accomplish for you. I want to make sure I set your expectations because Frankly, this is unlike any series I've ever taught before. Typically, we have the three-tiered structure where you jump in, you say, okay, here's the marketing info, here's the concept, and then here's the configuration. All that gone, we're going to be going right into the configuration. Here's the lab environment, now go for it. So in order to do that, I want to make sure everybody's at the right level and talk about what level you should be at before you can view this series. This is not a series for mere mortals. We're going to be getting into a lot of configuration without talking about the definitions, the concept explanations, and the theory. That was really the job of the first CCIE video series. This is going to be nothing but the lab. I also want to tell you how to approach this series because it's going to be a little different. Instead of sitting back in your TV mode and absorbing information, I need you to participate with me. You're going to be pausing the video. You're going to be thinking things through, drawing things out on paper, making sure you have the right concepts in place because really that's what you're going to need to do to get the most out of this series. And where I want to spend most of my time is in the general lab thoughts and my experiences, plural. Yes, that is correct. I do have multiple experiences with the CCIE lab and I want to make sure that you benefit from those. I want to really give you guys and gals what I wish I had four years ago when I was preparing for this lab exam, which is really just somebody to, to prep me for it, to tell me what to expect, what I'm going to experience as I get into that, and how I should best prepare for that lab exam. Well, let's start things off by talking about why we are here. We are here because I've been exactly where you are right now. Maybe you're the type of person that's at the point in life where you're thinking, you know, I should get a little more information about this CCIE lab exam. Maybe this is the next step for my career is getting a CCIE certification because from what I've heard, that's a very valuable one to have. And I can say you're absolutely right. Maybe you're at the stage where you've already decided to go that direction. You're starting to get your materials and study up and maybe you've even bought a few routers and switches to practice on. Or maybe you've even gotten to the point where you've registered for the CCIE exam and that date may be fast approaching and you're thinking, wow, am I really ready? Am I really up to being there for eight hours and configuring these devices? I've been at each one of those levels and I know exactly what you're feeling right now. This series and the reason that we're here is to number one, gain direction to really see what direction to study and prepare for this lab exam. I want to peel the packaging back and expose the mystery behind the CCIE lab exam and get as close as I can without violating any non-disclosure agreements to talking about what to expect when you get behind that door where it's very cold and very nerve-wracking. I want to point you in directions that you can go to study and, and walk you through scenarios very much like the CCIE lab exam and talk you through the thought process and really what you're going to be going through when you experience that lab itself. The next one that's going to happen just naturally as we go through this is gaining experience. You're going to be going with me as we configure each phase of this exam. You're going to have lab exams sitting right in front of you with sections divided up and scenarios that we knew to accomplish. And I'm going to be walking through each one of those scenarios with you. By you coming with me, you're going to naturally gain that experience of configuring the device yourself. You're going to see the commands that we're typing, see the thought process processes have that thought process yourself and of course that will take you to number three to gain confidence you know the hardest thing that you have to fight when you get to that CCIE lab exam yourself it's all you you're gonna be a bundle of nerves going oh what what's going on you know I'm not expecting this I wasn't you know you're gonna have all these thoughts and if you can just breathe easy and relax that lab exam will go so much better for you. And by going through this, I hope to have you gain confidence. If the, the picture is a little small, this is a little man flying over the Grand Canyon on a motorcycle. Maybe not that much confidence, but you should feel very confident registering and going to take that lab exam by time we're said and done. 
Now, before we get going, I want to make sure that everybody's set as to what prerequisite information you should know or what level you should be at before you jump into this video series. I decided to draw this out on a graph because that's just the kind of person I am. And we have these markers kind of I, I call these like career markers or markers of of knowledge in the Cisco world and how much time it takes to get there now I can't exactly tell how much time for each person because everybody's different and how fast they're able to learn and soak in this technology down here I have the CCNA up to the CCNP some CCIE studies and dot 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 right there is where you should be at before you jump into this CCIE lab series if you just got your CCNP this may be a little too far ahead for you and the reason I say that is because the world of the CCNP and the CCIE are very very different and it's it's hard for me ex to explain because a lot of people look at the certification track and of course on the Cisco website it says get your CCNA get your CCNP and right after it is the CCIE that is absolutely true that's the path you usually follow however the CCNP is very much I don't want to say this but I'm gonna book knowledge when I took the CCNP exams is about four or five years ago and I went through the entire CCNA CCNP CCDA CCDP all those tests in one month now I know today they are much more difficult than when I took them back in the early days before simulation questions before uh, drag and drop and all those has come along it was just flat multiple choice but still there's a huge gap between the CCNP and the CCIE and that's why I would really say if you just did get your CCNP you might want to grab the CCIE CBT Nuggets title it's kind of the in the the first CCIE title that I created this one focuses on nothing but the concepts and configuration for example I'm talking about OSPF I'll explain what this multi area environment is how to redistribute and then do it in this series we're not really going to be doing much explanation I'll talk I'll be talking as I go through the steps however this is really where the concepts are going to come from is that CBT Nuggets CCIE I'll call it volume one the non lab title um, then above that we have people that have attempted the lab and some people that are already a CCIE. I've actually had a lot of emails from CCIEs who have gone through that first title and said, hey, this is, this is really great. It was a great refresher. If you already are a CCIE, definitely. You've got the experience that you can jump into this as well. So we've defined the why, the what, and now the how how to approach this series as a student, as a viewer going through this series with me. What I want to say, the biggest thing I can say is put yourself in the driver's seat. What I want you to do is, yes I will be talking through these scenarios as we go through them, but I want you to pause the video often and put yourself there. You just got asked that question. You have that lab in front of you. What would you do? What would you do to accomplish that objective or that step in the lab? How would you attack it? Then go ahead and play the video and I'll show you my approach. Now there's many, many times you're going to say, well, I could go this direction and you'll kind of plan it out and draw out some diagrams then you'll hit play and I'll go a completely different direction. And you know what I say to that? That's awesome because there's so many ways to accomplish nearly everything on the CCIE lab exam. When we go through this, I'm going to show you how I would do it, but you may find a much better or more efficient or a way to uh, help keep it from having large effects later on in the lab, or you might go a direction and then see the way I do it and go, hey, that's, that's even better. So either way, that helps. it really helps you to see those multiple paths that you can go. If you do have questions, like you're going through, for instance, you can email me at any time and I'll be happy to respond, but I do get so many emails, sometimes it takes me a couple days. I would say research your questions using the Cisco online documentation, not cisco.com where you search and go into that search field, but what I mean is the online docs. Here's what I mean. This is the Cisco Systems website. This is where we typically go to do our searches. For example, you jump right over here to the search field, type in configure. <laughs> well, there you go. I've got plenty of configure things that I've searched on, but configure OSPF and hit enter and we'll find all our results. This site you won't have access to in the CCIE lab exam. This one you will. 
the Technical Documentation Site, formerly known as Technical Documentation Site. They are in the process of revising this and moving it to different areas like under the tech support area and under the TAC website, but you will have access to this information in the CCIE lab exam. You can see that things are moving around uh, quite a bit, but you will either via a CD-ROM or via a proxied web service that filters it down have access to this in the lab. We'll get more into the navigation and how to work through this website as we get into the series itself. However, that is where I want you to go if you have questions to do your research, to see configuration, to see is it possible to do it that way. Finally, the other approach I want to make sure I mention is to take breaks. Don't try to slam through this whole series in a few days because you'll just burn your brain out. Let Take breaks. Go through go through a couple of uh, videos, a couple of these 30-minute 30, 30 videos. That's why they're geared to these small nugget sizes. And so that you can take some time, go through them after work, do a little research, let it soak in, maybe go through it again to make sure that information is solidified, then go to the next one. Span it out. Don't try and uh, digest it all in one sitting. Okay, now I want to focus in and give you my general lab thoughts, suggestions, advice, as you could call it, and my experiences when I went through the CCIE lab myself, kind of just some of the background on that. The first thing that I would say is always, before anything, check what's up. See what's going on with the CCIE lab, regardless of what lab you're going for. Now this series is designed for the routing and switching lab so you could go to www.cisco.com forward slash go forward slash ccie things are always changing on the ccie lab exam topics being added enhanced modified ios versions being upgraded things of that nature to give you an example when i finished the last ccie series voice over ip was a huge topic on the routing and switching exam Okay, maybe not huge, but it was on there. And as soon as I finished, Cisco announced and said, hey, we're removing voice over IP because now we have a voice CCIE lab exam and we're gonna add IP version six. And my response was, oh, because I just finished that series. So I went ahead and added IP version six to the original CCIE series. Things like that are always happening. So always check what's up and see what's going on with the lab exam. Make sure you're still studying the right information and going the right direction. Uh, the second things I want to say is be committed but not firm. <laughs> Let me explain that. Be committed as in go book the exam if you're planning on going. Even if it's six months out that you're booking it or a full year in advance, go ahead and book it and give yourself a date to stick to. That kind of gives you something to study for. You don't want to be one of those people that says, oh yeah, I'm studying for my IE, and you study, say, oh, things get in the way, life happens, and uh, two years later you go, oh yeah, I was studying for the CCIE. Book yourself a date, but I say not firm in the sense that if that date is quickly approaching and you're thinking, wow, I am not ready, then change it. Go ahead and give yourself a couple more months or add a few more weeks to that. Now that the CCIE lab exam is one day, it's very, I won't say very easy, but it's pretty simple to find a slot where you can jump in. And you'll also find as dates get closer, more slots are opening up because more people are saying, whoa, I'm not ready and scheduling in advance. So you'll find if you, for instance, if you want to test two weeks from now, you'll probably ha find some slots that are wide open. Study, 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 and then repeat that process. <laughs> it's just a good lab thought for, well, any exam. Make sure you're studying and you have enough time put in. Um, it, it's hard for me to say, oh, this many hours of study or these many days or prepare for this long. I can give you my experience and I'll give you that in a few slides. But really it's different based on your personality, your drive, how absorbent you are to this technical information. I've been teaching for seven years now and I've seen many different personalities. Some people just suck this stuff up, they absorb it and they love it in the sense that they go home and they just keep going. They can't, they can't get enough of it. Other people, they study it and they say, well, you know what, that was great for uh, a couple hours, but now I have some time to spend with my family and things like that. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that one is better than the other at all. Well, I could say, but what I'm saying is some people can absorb very quickly. That's my point. Finally, evaluate, decide, and don't give up. My point here is evaluate whether this exam is for you, decide to go for it or not to go for it, and then don't give up. 
first off, I want to throw a percentage out there for you. Take, take a guess. How out of all the Cisco certified people, meaning someone who has passed a CCNA exam or CCDA? Or... <laughs>